Okay. <coughs> oh, gosh. <coughs> oh, it happens when you're about to do something. Talk, 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 cough. Anyway, um, set an 85 dB, um, which is bloody damn loud. Um, <coughs> so. <coughs> a few ways I would go about make it 85 and not harsh and you know where it's going to be um, too, too, too bad, bloody loud but still damn loud you know and uh, even still uh, you know in days of projection um, you know movies were never often played at um, 85 dB or, or 7 on the fader you know <coughs> You know, seven on the fader or uh, zero. You know. <coughs> um, <coughs> so I want roughly uh, 20 dB pink noise there, and then I have to then, <coughs> oh gosh, adjust it. Bullshit! To, um, <coughs> bullshit! <laughs> I mean, Bloody hell, really. Um, okay, so if I turn on the pink noise, it's going to be pretty loudish. I say 1 dB. And that's just bloody damn loud, if you know what I mean. Because it's pretty damn loud to uh, talk over the bloody. <coughs> Get my meaning? <laughs> that's just 81 dB. <laughs> Um, 81 dBC. Um, I didn't check dBA. Um, put it dBA. And it just nudges up a little bit louder. You know what I mean? I mean, bloody hell, that is louder. That, that JBL 23, 23A is louder than my vacuum cleaner, even though it's 85 dB on the vacuum cleaner. But... Um, <clears throat> trick here is what I'm doing is I'm applying some um, PEQ filter. Um, if I can focus that, I'm not sure if it'll focus. Maybe it doesn't mean that you should apply the same. I'm just applying it um, just as a, an instinct. Um, so, got a little bit of a cut. Um, there with the Q bandwidth just to shallow it down a bit um, I'm also observing so I don't go too far much because I don't want to take off too much high frequency so I want to leave a bit of high 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 frequency there and another filter um, that's at the lower end so I can warm up the base base region a little bit it's like almost 12, you know, because those horns uh, can go up to about 120 dB. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. Um, but even even still, 81, you know. Um, <coughs> plus, if I add on the, uh, the base, base, you know, base channel, that's going to indicate a little bit more. Um... So I'll just stand by with the mouse there. Um, so stand by then to mute, demute the uh, center LF. And focus. So bit bit too much there, I think. Um, but that might need a little bit more adjusting. Um, that might need a little bit more adjusting. But um, we'll see how it plays on a mono movie, on a mono soundtrack mix. Um, ba -ba -bum.
and of course the, the mix itself might be a little bit harsh might be a little bit harsh and might say tame it down a little bit on some you know so it's like having uh, an eq to do the eq for the speakers and have another eq that's secondary so, um, see if i'm turning it down on the fader you know what i mean Well, I'll just ride it. I'll just ride the fader, but that is pretty damn loud. And that is a mono movie. That's a mono. Bloody hell. You know? I mean, I already have tinnitus. So I don't need to add add more to, you know, add more to it. Not that I don't think I could, because I don't think I'll be exceeding... Um, 120 dB levels, um, which are just uh, plain stupid, but um, mute the bass. It's not like I can't understand dialogue. So most dialogue will be heard, or vo vocal dialogue speech will be heard through the HF, HF horn. the little click on the button when he presses the presses the uh, extinguisher bottle on the uh, engine that's his second in, that's his second extinguisher he just pressed Look, you know, I can hear that little click that little click sound and then pressing the extinguisher button. Um, so, yeah, that generally gives you an idea. And you might want to sort of like have a secondary EQ, but then um, I don't think you can use, for those that just use these AVRs and just use the Odyssey, you know, and think that's good enough and then still you find it still a little bit too loud a little um a little bit too loud a little bit too harsh um you can't use the uh you cannot use the other eq on it which is um when you go into i think it's audio setting and you go down to graph eq that cannot be engaged, I don't think, because the Odyssey up here would totally override it. So it's not like um, you can use a the basic uh, EQ there. That's only on two channel at the moment um, because of the AVR setting it's on. Uh, otherwise, that goes up to you know. And these uh, EQ bands are not third octave; they're uh, one half octave. So that meaning. Um, the Q bandwidth is going to be a little bit wider. So if you were to lower one kilohertz, it would lower um, the neighboring frequencies uh, slightly below it and slightly above it. And it's very easy for me to observe that on the um, RTA analyzer and then adjusting it and seeing, yeah, that's that's a one that's a, a one half octave EQ. Um, I think it's pretty actually cheap of 
these manufacturers putting in half octave EQ really why, why, why didn't they just put third octave in with say high pass low pass filters and um, band pass filtering and such like, like what you get on a, a Behringer um, DEQ I mean all this is software is is on a microprocessing chip which you can get in something like that and all you do is make it bigger and make it more you know it's like it's like they 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 treat the homeowner like like a child like they're not going to give us a proper a proper equalizer proper you know um you know to make these adjustments and particularly if you want to have to do the speakers in the room yeah if um and then have a, a an ex, and then have a secondary eq to make just adjustments to specific movies just to make to take out you know if the movie mix is really out ain't going to go that much higher you know you know but it still sounds too loud and you can take out some of the frequency just bringing it down making because our ears to bass frequencies are less sensitive um than you know and the same would go our ears would get then less sensitive to um if it was using a mismatching speakers miss uh, lcr uh typical two-way which is just base two dual base mid and a tweeter or it might be two base mid mid range and a tweeter it just depends and then you just reduce it or it might be a hf horn um <clears throat> whether it be a two-way classic two-way or three-way and then you just reduce this part of the frequency just doesn't make it less harsh so you can make it a little bit more you can make it that thx exciting um and uh i suppose then with a secondary eq <clears throat> with a secondary eq it could be user um programmable to memorize um the movie that you played not that the AVR is going to know. The player might know, but mm, I think the player does know. Uh, what what if if you take a disc out and if you put another disc back in, it, in the encoding, it sort of says, "Oh yeah, do you want to resume from this point again?" Okay, press yes or no. Press no to start from the beginning, or press yes to re resume from the, the the last point you played. Um, an AVR needs to be similar. <clears throat> um, I think the only way you could probably program into an AVR, uh, because I think um, I think they're still using them. <laughs> um, not sure if they all do, but um, yeah, everything's got a barcode, you know. So what you need is something like, um, you know, everything's got like a barcode. What you need is like a barcode scanner. And you scan that movie. Um, you know, when you put the movie back in the player, uh, you take it out the box, physical. And then you have a scanner and you scan. And then that AVR would then go to, right that eq setting for customized specifically this movie for this room while well, the eq curves are still set to the speakers okay so you need a secondary eq but the it would have to be um oh golly gosh how long is a piece of string now because there are billions of movies worldwide so it would have to be uh something that you could probably um maybe like a usb or a fire stick or something that you plug in and then um yeah maybe something like that um and then the avr all, all that eq setting then for that movie would then get programmed in and then you can play it or make addition additional or make additional alterations to experiment um and then that program would be uh, rewritten. So you rewrite that program to a new EQ setting. 
for the playback. I think that's what it should be. I think something like that would pretty pretty much work. Um, and and be interesting because if everyone had the an AVR or such that can do that, and you go to another friend's home that's got not maybe the same AVR but the same sort of EQ feature, okay, the same sort of, and you could just plug that and see how that. EQ curve settings behave in that other room because all home cinemas more or less should be sounding the same sort of thing but not everyone's using the same speakers so it's very difficult you, you can you can get I can make big PA speakers sound a little bit more bigger or I can make them sound a lot lot smaller if I want to with the, the crossover I can make them sound very tiny um, you can't make a, a small speaker sound very, very large to a, like a PA speaker size, cinema size. You, you can only, you've only got a certain limit until where you're going to run into problems with it. And you would run into problems with a large PA if overdone. But you can't really go over too much overdone because usually they just sound bloody loud and clear as a bell. Um, crystal clear um, but I think something like that would be a pretty good feature if that could be um, if that could be implemented the only other way to implement that sort of idea is to simply have secondary um, outboard equalizers or um, to, to make those adjustments um, yeah, yeah, think about it, think about it.